The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold. And the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. You know, there's, there, the, the, I think the Raiders are the one team in the league that they're good enough to make the playoffs. They're not good enough to win a bunch of games in the playoffs, but they could also beat everybody. I, I, I don't believe they've already beaten the Chiefs. They could beat anybody in the league. I, I, Philadelphia is good enough to win a playoff game, sneak in. They're not good enough to beat everybody. Green Bay is not good enough to beat everybody. And Green Bay may be better than the Las Vegas Raiders. But I honestly believe they're the only team in the NFL today that could beat anybody on any Sunday. But they're not good enough to win like two or three or four playoff games in a row. But that, to me, I had big questions about Gruden when he came back. Who takes 10 years off any industry, comes back and is elite? It's like, it just doesn't happen. But uh, that was coaching yesterday. That was great. Now, you know the Raiders could beat everybody if Colin Coward said so. He picked the Raiders to win five games at the beginning of the season. But one game at a time, they have the Los Angeles Chargers on Sunday, and they need to show up. Carr finally beat the Chiefs at Arrowhead in Week 5 with pinpoint accuracy in the red zone. And his big arm from anywhere, throwing the deep ball. The Raiders finally got him some speed on the outside this offseason, and Nelson Aguilar... Henry Ruggs, who can go up and make the contesting catch as well. But with that 4-2 speed, he will leave you. Carr is showing this year that whatever kind of throw you need, he can make it. But unfortunately, it's hard to make any kind of throw when the wind is blowing 35 miles an hour. So last week in Cleveland, he had to work his short game. And Raider Nation will be happy to know he used his legs. Clearly down before the ball came out here, but he does need to secure it better. Here he's going to be smart and take that thing out of bounds. Oh, the spin move. He's feeling himself for that one. Good job of managing the game. Here he's checking out of a bad play and into a good one to get the running game going. We're finally starting to see the Josh Jacobs that we saw in 2019. He's pushing the pile again. Vision is still there. And the offensive line is starting to open holes for him. I'm not even going to waste your time with the Charger defense because they can't stop the Raider offense. We don't even know if Joey Bosa is going to play. 
So we move on to the Charger offense that rushed for over 200 yards against the Broncos last week. Troy Main Pope got it going a little bit. doubtful this week with a concussion, so we will likely see more of Justin Jackson, who's already the starter. He's got some jitterbug in him, and he's a good outside stretch runner. He's also good in space and can catch the ball out of the backfield. He doesn't have the most power though. Nick Kwiatkowski is playing this week, so don't expect the Raiders to be bad against the run. The Browns came into this game averaging 157 yards rushing per game, and the Raiders held them to just 101 yards rushing. And that's because it's all sea ball, get through blockers, get ball for Kwiatkowski. He's also been excellent in coverage for the Raiders this year. And when you throw a screen on him, he can cut underneath blocks, get to the ball, and he's trying to get it out. Safety Jonathan Abram is a big help to the running game in the box. He flies around and chases the ball down from the backside. And he brings the hat from the back end. He'll get up and let you know about it afterwards too. He's also a good blitzer, so we should look forward to more of this. He just has to hold his water because he costs himself a sack here. He also handles his business on the back end in coverage. Nah, fool, not in my area. What the Raiders have to worry about the most on Sunday is the Charger passing game. Rookie quarterback Justin Herbert has a big arm and he's not afraid to use it. This is a dime deep down the field and on the back shoulder. Here he is moving to his left and he still puts some zip on it. And of course the guy has some weapons around him. Most notably Keenan Allen. The Raiders got something for him though. All that and the 6'6", 240 pounder can run. He's obviously not there yet but he has Patrick Mahomes type talent. He has the big arm. And can make any type of throw that's necessary on the field. He'll run it on you too. Ability to extend plays and make throws like this. And this right here is just some cheat code stuff. But the Raiders held him to only seven points in the second half. So what happened? 
2019 number four overall Cleveland Furl happened. He sets up a sack here. And sets his buddy Max Crosby up for a sack here. Here he gets a pressure that leads to an interception. And this would have been a sack if Mahomes didn't push forward for a yard. Furl took over that second half as he chases Mahomes around the yard here. Furl had two and a half sacks against the Chargers last year, and they still give up pressure. The Broncos were able to sack Herbert. They pressured him into errant throws. got two interceptions out of him. In a one point game, this one in the red zone was costly. The Raiders will have Trayvon Mullen to cover Keenan Allen. Here he is on tight end Travis Kelsey. Mullen held Allen to 14 yards into his coverage in the first game and zero in the second game against him last year. The denial. Then here he is on Tyreek Hill. Push him out of bounds and now he can't catch the ball. He almost got an interception out of it. Because of who Mullen is and the weather, the Browns didn't try him much. He did get caught slipping once, giving up this catch for a gain of 18. My big concern for Sunday is cornerback Nevin Lawson. This isn't going to be a catch, but that's also not Keenan Allen or Mike Williams. And you know with Mullen on the other side, the Chargers are going to go at Lawson. I'm also concerned about LaMarcus Joyner and one-on-one -on -one coverage in the slot. But he's one of the few Raider corners that's good in zone coverage. And looking at this play with him at safety, I can see that's where he belongs. Come on, Gunther, do it. Move him there for good. For the offense, Carr doesn't have to worry about 35 mile an hour wins this Sunday, so he'll be able to throw the ball deep down the field to Ruggs. It looks like the Raiders are starting to get the running game going too. On defense, Wikowski is there to stuff the run, cover, and force turnovers. Abram is back from the COVID list to set the tone. After seeing LaMarcus Joyner at safety last Sunday, I'm praying the Raiders put him there again this week. Raider Nation really needs to see the furrow that showed up in week five. And you already know what you're going to get from Mullen. And hopefully, that equals a Raider win. Thank you for watching. See you next time.